One of the requirements for graduation at my own school is for each student to write a research paper. And that research paper has to be has to include a specific amount of individual personal research. If I remember right, the, it's 60 percent or more, so greater than 60 percent personal research. And the reason I bring that up is because personal research is what this particular topic is all about. We're talking about designing, conducting, and analyzing surveys. It's really easy, especially today, to go out and get on the internet and just browse all over, Google whatever topic you're looking for, and get all kinds of random information about pretty much any topic in the world. But without knowing where that information is really coming from, you have almost no way to avoid bias. There's going to be some kind of bias in just about everything on the internet. I mean, bias and internet are almost synonyms from that standpoint. <laughs> you never know who wrote something. You never know why they wrote it or where they got their information from. So being able to collect information yourself to do your own personal research and actually get information directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak, allows you the best opportunity to at least control the bias. You may not be able to avoid it, but at least be able to control the bias and know what the sources of bias in your information might be. As you're organizing your survey, um, there are a number of questions you should probably ask yourself to help you help you get yourself organized. And organizing is a big deal because without being organized, you're not going to be able to ask the right questions from the right people. And not having the right questions or not having the right people pretty much means your survey doesn't do you any good at all. So you'll see actually in your text, um, somewhere about a third of the way down that first section, there's a, a part that's titled Designing a Survey. And what they talk about in there are a number of useful steps, and I want to go over those just really quickly. Their first step there is to determine the goal, and I think that that's, that's huge. If you don't know what your goal is, in other words, what is your real question, then it's going to be really, really hard to write the right questions. Now, I know that, that sounds silly, that sounds really obvious, but I don't know how many times I've seen surveys written up that seem like they're asking the right question, but aren't really going to get the information that's important to the student. So make sure that what you're, whatever you're researching, whatever it is you want to know about, that you can come up with some very specific questions where the answers mean something to you. The answers aren't just yes or no, but leading questions that get people to tell you more about what it is you're researching. The second thing you want to know is who should you ask? Who's going to have the information you want to know? So who will know? If you want to find you know, the most popular uh, type of shirt for high school students in America, you probably shouldn't go wandering through a, uh, oh, I don't know, um, probably shouldn't go wandering through an assisted care facility. If you want to know what the most durable type of wheelchair is, chances are you do a lot better off going in and talking in an emergency room than you would going in and talking to somebody in a movie theater. So who's going to have the information you want to know? The third thing that you should check out or that you should uh, question is how are you going to collect the information? What's the best way to ask? What is the way to ask? Sometimes face-to-face -face is excellent. Sometimes passing out a, a survey and just telling people that they can respond without putting the name on it is a better idea. If the questions you have are personal or private and you want to really get people to respond, you're much better off just giving them a piece of paper and asking them if they would fill it out anonymously and then put it back into a box without even putting their name on it than you are if you just interview them face-to-face. -face. But by interviewing face-to-face -face when you can, you can also include or at least identify information yourself about expressions that somebody might have or the tone of their voice, which can tell you a lot about what somebody really thinks about a specific topic. The next thing is decide how are you going to ask the questions. In other words, what order to put things in. I mean, certainly if you have five questions in a row about how great PlayStation 3s are, and then you ask somebody if they really like Xbox anyway, you're going to be slanting their opinion. So figuring out what order to put things in is very important. 
And then the last couple of things on there include conducting the uh, interview and then analyzing the results. And those are obviously very important. We spent a, a last couple of lessons here talking about ways to analyze the results. But I think ahead of time, these four points are very important as far as getting you organized so that when you conduct a survey, it makes sense and it gives you information that you can bother to use when you go to uh, you know, put together your histogram or your stem and leaf plot or your box, box and whisker plot to organize the information.